Good evening. Good evening. So great to be here with everybody. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Speak to all of the Hello, people who, who are streaming. By, by. And good evening or good afternoon to you, wherever you may oh. be in the world at this point, streaming. You've got and... multitudes who are just watching you, so <laughs> I'm, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Hello. Thank you for having me here Thank you so afternoon. much for coming. Thank you. I had so much fun with you before. Man, that comedy <laughs> show. <laughs> She's a natural. Oh, we had a great, we had a great, great time in the Lord last visit. We did, we did, and I, I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled to have you back. Thank you. Mom says hi. Uh, I was wondering, is, is she? Go, she's watching this evening. She's watching. Hi, mom. Everybody say hi, Mama Chip. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> she is watching. Well, as you see that I've got some microphones out in the audience here, I'm going to let them. I'm going to turn it over to them really, really quickly, okay. and uh, let them ask you some questions. They, they, they've got questions. I hope you're ready for it now. I All hope right. you're ready. But uh, I'm, I'm going to ask a few just to get us started. Um, you're an author yourself. You, you've got a brand new book, and uh, we'll talk about that in just a, just a bit. And uh, you'll have an opportunity to get that and carry it home with you with the author's autograph. It always increases the value of whatever you have when you have an autograph. So get the autograph and then sell it on eBay. Make your Wait money. Wait a minute. What? what? <laughs> But you're an author yourself, but in your own reading, tell us the one or two books that you've read in your life, outside of the Bible, you know, but one or two other books that have impacted your life personally. Right out of college, Bishop, there was a, uh, a book called Improving Your Serve hmm. by Dr. Charles Swindoll, and that really uh, did so much for me um, because it talked about having the heart of a servant, Yes, And it talked about the things that we can do to literally improve how we serve yeah. and the heart that you need to serve wow. uh, and, and the amount of transparency that's very important yeah. when you are a servant. Yes. Uh, so that was, that was certainly a book that, that really unlocked a few things and has, you know, has, has stood with me for all this time. Now, you know, serving requires humility. Um, you're a, such a down-to-earth person. I meet other people that have been on television and in movies, and they've got a diva complex about them, where you almost have to climb up on a step ladder to say good morning to them. But you're such an approachable, down-to-earth, fun person. Did, did that book help you with that? Or is that just your natural personality? Is that your mama that threatened you? Or <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Now we're there. Yes. Um, you know, my mom uh, was not about to raise anything other than a humble, kind child. Wow. And the thing about my mom, and I talk about this a great deal in the book, is that when I was starting to become very successful uh, as a child actor, she never stopped parenting me. Yeah. She so, never became so like my manager all of a sudden, and nor did she become such a huge fan yes. that she forgot she was a parent. Yeah. And that really helped you know, keep me in, in lockstep with wow. things like respect and kindness and appreciation. Uh, I have a lot of stories in the book about how she would let me know, hey, listen, just because, you know, all of these people come up to you when you say, I'd like a piece of gum, and here comes 14 people with 25 different flavors of gum oh, because wow. you are part of their livelihood. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, you have to understand and you have to recognize that's not really for real. Yes, yes. You know, that's because of who you are in that moment and what you mean to them. And not that they didn't care about me as a person, yep. but to that degree. Yes. You know, and things like, she always would say, because her sister, my Aunt Pat, was uh, on the set with me. Mm -hmm. and, and you have to have a guardian, you know, when you're, when you're um, a minor and yep. you're working in things. And she would always say, make sure they don't look past my sister. Wow. You make sure they see Aunt Pat the same that they wow. see you. 
Yeah, yeah. And that would then, you know, transition over when you become a wife. Yes. And you are famous or have success or what have you. And people can easily try to push back. No, no, this is my husband. Yeah, right, yes. You yes, know, these yeah. are my children, that sort yeah. of thing. So, again, wow. mom just made. And it's just, to me, it's too much work trying to be <laughs> anything else. I mean, I played Regine for five years. Plenty of diva right there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. We need more mothers like that in our world now. We really, really do. So I'm glad that you put those kinds of stories in yeah. the book that helps people in, learn some parenting tips as well. Very much so. It is. It is. I, if I could have called the book, um, you know, Mama Chip's Wisdom, yeah, wow. I, I would have. And wow. we almost we almost did a thing where we put in the margins, yes. you know, little squiggly notes and things of, you know, a little Mama Chip gem, Mama yes. Chip gem. Uh, because there's, it's just chock full of them. But wow. that's literally how um, you ain't read nothing crazy about me. Yeah, right. I ain't up in um, on on South Cobb Drive, you know, half naked and my hair standing on my head, waving yeah. around a bat, screaming bloody murder, and I mean going crazy. Yeah. Because it's easy to do if you yes. don't get a hold of this thing. Yes. And so she really did help me to. She set the foundation. Hmm. And here's the thing that was so, when I look back as I was writing the book, she was, and still is obviously, only 18 years older than me. Wow. Mom was a, a, a young single mom. Yeah. How do you know all of this stuff? Yeah. Because yeah. she certainly wasn't raised that way, you know, other than to be a good person. Sure. Uh, and I, I'm convinced that, you know, the Lord was just constantly talking to her and whispering to her sure. in order to keep us both. Oh, wow. I love it. I love it. But let me ask you this. Whenever you feel overwhelmed or frustrated, what do you do to bring yourself back into focus? Uh, um... <laughs> Please don't tell me weed. Please. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, honestly, I <laughs> I usually have to like like watch something funny. I just I try to just disengage. You know, I just taught Quincy the four year old that word. Uh, cause, cause he was having some, some, you know, some issue and I was like, just disengage, you know? And so for me, um, remembering that, you know, I'm, I'm not superwoman, remembering that everything is okay. And if it doesn't get done now, it can still get done at another time. Um, my friend, where are you? Sister, where are you? Tandria, where are you? You knew I was going to call your name. Where are you? <laughs> are, is she hot? Okay, she might be, she might be out, out in the out, lobby she... over at the... She's out there? Okay. Uh, when you guys all go to... The, there she is waving. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> when you all go, because I know you all going to go to the lobby, to the book table when we're done, uh, and you'll see a wonderful woman standing there with beautiful locks. Her and her daughters have beautiful locks, and her name right. is Tandria. Uh, Tandria directed a movie that I was in called Across to Bear hmm. a few years ago, if you've seen that. Hmm. Uh, but she once gave me some wonderful advice. She said, don't just jump from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. That transition time is really important. Yes. Either take a minute to yes. congratulate yourself that you either got it done or got a little bit done towards a bigger thing. Yes. Take a minute to breathe. Take yes. a little moment for yourself. Don't just jump right in and you just yes. keep going from the next to the next to the next. Yes. And that was invaluable yes. to me because I was one of those that would just go from, okay, I finished that, closed this window on the laptop, now to go to this one, you know, and all sorts yes. of things. And I sounded like a crazy person when I was describing it. Yes, yes. I overwhelmed myself describing it. <laughs> and so uh, wow. that's one way. Yes. Uh, sometimes it literally is just closing my eyes, hmm. you know, taking a minute to just breathe. Yes. Um, sometimes disengaging in terms of my social media. Yeah. Yep. Uh, uh, but, and like I said too, just doing something that may be kind of mindless. I'll go for walks. Yep. Yes. Uh, uh, I'll go for a swim. I will um, spend some time with the kids. Yes. 
Unless they're the ones making me feel overwhelmed. <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen, and amen. Um, uh, but it's important to to take those 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 minutes, you know, and just just kind of reset yourself, yes. you know, and 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 reboot yourself. That's that's yes. so important. It's like a computer, you know, yes. when you overwork your computer, yes. and that thing says, mm -mm, "Stop, yes. yeah, that's so <laughs> nothing true. else for right now. Yes. I have to I have to catch up." Sure. And and so I found that that was okay. Yes. And what really unlocked it for me was really it wasn't so much about what do I do. Yes. It was doing it. Yes. Yes. It yes. was giving myself the permission. Yes. To do that. Yes. It was okay to take a minute for yes. myself. Yes. And once I discovered dancing, oh well, then forget about wow. it. You know, I will go into the bathroom. And bust out a quick five, six, seven, wow. eight, yeah, and yeah. you know, <laughs> then I'm all good. <laughs> oh, I love that. You know, that's a wonderful key in life because so many people don't do transitions well. Mm -hmm. One year, the America lost in the Olympics in the relay race mm -hmm. because they didn't. Oh, that baton drop thing. The baton, yeah. Oh, they my husband's a former track and yes, field star yes. and runner and all that. Lord, he almost lost his whole mind. <laughs> so I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, they don't handle transitions well. In some languages, for example, the word face is not, they don't have a singular for face. They only have faces because they know that people don't, no one person has the same face with everyone. You're one face with mama, you're another face with spouse, you're another face with children, you're another uh, face with coworkers, neighbors. Every relationship brings a different face out. So when a person comes from, you know, just like, you have to do some kind of routine, I would assume, to get into character mentally and emotionally. Yes. And I mean, I've seen you in some characters, I'm yes. like, this chick crazy. <laughs> no. yes. I mean, so, I mean, so the ritual, the same ritual in terms of getting into a character. When you come home, you sometimes I would recommend to people sit in your car, whatever, whatever kind of ritual that you need yes. to go through. You need to create a ritual yes. that helps you to make that transition. Sit in your car, take some breaths, and say, you know what, I've got to go. When I go in this house. I don't want to go in there with the stress and the frustration of what I've dealt with today at work, bills that are due. I want to go in and I want to be mommy. Yeah. And, and, but you have to, it's almost like I, I need to get into this role. Sure. When my uh, husband is working uh, in a play or on a show uh, and he'll come home from the set or from rehearsals and uh, he'll say, you know, I just, I mean, now it's routine. But, you know, early in our, in our relationship and then in our marriage, he would say, you know, I need to decompress. And I would look like, what? <laughs> you need to what? Decompress? Man, if you don't get up over here, you know, but that's, I, I realize, you know, it, it, it's important. And whatever that, that process is, give yourself the permission to actually to do that and, and engage in that so that you can be a more optimum version of you in all the other moments. So wh what kind of routine do you do to put yourself in the mindset of a particular character that you're playing? I mean, you know, cause some of them, I mean, it has, they, you gotta capture that emotion yeah. of, of that particular character. I mean, some of it is, I mean, tears have to come. You, you have to show fear, anxiety, and frustration, all of that. How, how do you, I mean, if you're in a happy mood, <laughs> and you just come into that and and now you've got to be this stressed out diva right, you know right, right. how do you how do you do how do you do that mentally it, it varies um there's a movie that i did called a question of faith how many of you have seen a question of faith yay and so it's currently on netflix but thank you so much for those of you who saw it in the theaters last fall and then uh we've been trending on netflix so so thank you but uh it's a film where um i'm i'm thrust into very dramatic yes. circumstances. Yes. Uh, and our very first day of filming uh, was like the day of all days to really, you know, just, just all the emotion had to come out. Uh, and so for me, of course, sometimes it's just the script and hopefully the writing is, yeah. is, is there and it's good so that you can get your mind from, get your mind right from what's on the page. 
But then you have to go, okay, there's several different takes and rehearsals and keeping it fresh and those things. Uh, and so a lot of times I will, uh, I'm very um, affected by music, like most beings are. And so uh, I would listen to uh, uh, specific songs uh, that would put me into that same mindset. So for example, uh, in the scene, and again, a lot of you know the movie when the tragedy happens to myself and my family. Uh, I listened to the Hamilton soundtrack uh, when it's, uh, it's a song called The Unimaginable because something unimagin un unimaginable happens to Hamilton and his wife and family, uh, similarly to what happens in our household in the movie. And so the, 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 the way that my friend Renee is singing that beautiful song and then the music, the, I mean, just, just everything. And I just kept, I, I put it on loop and I just kept listening to it and that really put me in the place uh, that I needed to go to. Um, sometimes again, you know, conversely, if you have to, you know, if you're a character and the scene you're doing right then is very, you know, happy and, and I don't feel like being bothered right now and you have to still, you know, get yourself, you know, amped up for it. So music plays a big part in my preparation, uh, professionally speaking. Uh, and then also conversely, Personally, you know, when you asked me earlier about what do I do when I'm frustrated, uh, I will definitely put on a number of songs from my dear, dear big brother, Fred Hammond. Uh, and I will, I will, you know, from a lot of the songs from one of the older albums, Spirit of David is one of my favorites, um, and, and even some old, old commission. I mean, I'm going way back, yeah, way back yeah. to the way back. Uh, and then my friend Maxwell, I'll listen to a lot of his songs. And, and really, again, it's the musicality of it that just, you know, it, it's true when they say music soothes the savage beast, because we all have that savage beast in us, you know. Uh, and just being able to breathe yes. Yes. And, and going to whatever your happy place sure. uh, is for you. Sure. That's so good. Uh, some years ago, I wrote a chapter in a book and I entitled the chapter, Failure, the Womb of Success. Mm -hmm. How has a past failure or apparent failure in your life set you up for a later success? Did you say a pound of failure? No, a past, a past. Oh, <laughs> I mean, if a, woman a to... if a woman gains a pound that she doesn't want, that is a failure. <laughs> um, so what's the question? <laughs> Here we go, folks. Here we go. <laughs> How has a past failure or apparent failure um, positioned you for a later success in your life? I think for me, honestly, because it's not like I can point to something and say that had me yeah, at ground yeah. zero, sure. right, right. but because of that, I went to this yeah, sure. you know, elevated thing. I, I don't really have that I can recall sure. things like, that's, you know what, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. That's sure. not true. And I don't, I don't think of this in, in those terms because sure. it wasn't a failure like something that I had done. So gotcha. I, it, it, it's, it's I, I don't know if you can kind of categorize it as failure, but uh, tremendous disappointment. Yeah. Um, so, you know, again, and we talk about this in the book, but um, uh, Chris and I uh, had suffered a miscarriage and it was our second one. Wow. And um, it was New Year's Day. Mm. And you, 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 we had this thought of, mm. how do you start a year off wow. like this? Wow. And... December, that was 2013, wow. the beginning of 2013. Wow. December of 2013, Quincy was born. Wow, 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 yeah. wow, wow. And, wow. and it was, um, you know, we weren't, we weren't trying. Uh, <laughs> I actually had gone to get a physical because I thought that um, I was suffering from premenopausal wow. issues. <laughs> and I was angry, like, for real? Are you kidding me? Whatever that is, early onset crap. Yeah, yeah, sure. I was wow, like, yeah. no, sir, no. Wow. And turned out I was two months pregnant. Oh, wow. 
had no idea. And even from the things that your body is supposed, you know, that happens when you are with child, those are the same symptoms. So I thought that I was, you know, just, you know, getting ready for menopause kind wow. of thing. And um, so, so it wasn't necessarily a, a failure in, yes. in that regard, yes. but just a, a tremendous sure. disappointment. Yes. Uh, and like I said, it was our second one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and wow. the, the first one happened on my birthday and Mother's Day. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, right, wow. Um, but I, I, I guess from a more tangible, maybe even a, 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 from a business uh, a space, mm -hmm. um, I think for me, it, it, it's more about the disappointments that have, like the lows have been incredibly, incredibly low. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then, you know, so as not to be like bipolar or something mm. and trying to, you know, stay even with it. Sure. Um, understanding, you know, success that, that can come. Sure. Um, I don't know if I'm, if, you know, some people say cautiously optimistic. Yes. Um, because I don't want to get too excited. Um, you know, but then sometimes you just let loose with that praise. Yes. Just bottom yes. line. Um, but, but I think with, for, with failure, I understand what you're saying in, in terms sure. of titling that chapter that way. Sure. And the idea of, you know, failure doesn't always mean just that's it. Right. Failure can be a setup, a series of lessons learned to get you, you know, into a position of great success. Yes. Um, I, th I just don't, I, I don't look exactly through those lenses sure. at it. Um, because for me, again, I, I, I usually don't even use the word failure. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, sure. um, because it, it has such negative connotations that after sure. a while it's, it's hard to pull yourself up yeah. by the bootstraps with it. Uh, and so sometimes it's more so a, um, I'm, 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 I'm severely disappointed. Yeah. I'm yeah. really angry. I'm yeah. really hurt. Yeah. All right. What am I supposed to learn from this? Why yeah, didn't yeah, it right. work out? Yeah. And really, here's where I, I've really gotten understanding dealing with, with failure, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It was, well, what were you expecting? Yeah, yeah. Because what you were expecting. Yeah. May be different from what he was expecting. Right. That's so good. Yes. yes. And 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 so the things that I would look and go, oh, wow, that that totally didn't work. Well, in what way? Yes. Because this happened and this happened. So sure. it may not have been what you expected. Sure. You know, there's a part in the book where I talk about I felt like I had planted um, uh, uh, like carrot seeds wow. and I, you know, tilled the soil and watered and all that and telephone poles seemed to grow. <laughs> 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 like, like, I mean, just oh, how wow. this happened kind yeah, of, kind wow. of thing. And I had to realize that, well, those were my expectations yes. and even those were the desires of my heart. Sure. And then you start struggling with, okay, so you said, you was going to give me the desires of my heart. So those are the desires of my heart. What happened? Where's, where's the disconnect? Yes. And that requires a lot of conversation sure. with God. Yes. That requires a lot of being quiet with yes. God. Yes. I was running down my resume mm. to God. Yeah, wow. I'm a tither. Yeah. I'm Chip's daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> you know they tight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I give. I don't take credit for my success. I'm yeah. always giving you the glory. I mean, I've ran yeah. my resume down. So what? Mm. That's not what I had for you. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That wasn't so it. Good. Yes. So there, there was no failure. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You're failing in this moment because yeah. you had it in your mind how it was going to play out what was going to happen, with whom it was going to happen, sure. in what timing. Yeah. He's like, I ain't, I ain't put none of that out there. Yes, 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 yes. That's so good. Wow. That's so good. Wow. You know, and I think to a large degree, it's because it's not by what we get, it's by what we become in the process. Mm -hmm. It really helps us to become something. Mm -hmm. Here's the next question. Um, in the last 10 years... What have you become better at saying no to? 
<laughs> Ice cream. <laughs> y'all can laugh if you want to and act like, oh, she's so funny. No, she's so real. Because <laughs> that right there, that thing had me saints, let me tell you. <laughs> Cookies and cream? Oh. What? Oh, what? yeah. <laughs> but aside from that, um, Again, I hate to flip what you're, what you're asking, Bishop, but I got better at saying yes to Kim. Oh, wow. Good, good. good I got better good. at saying yes good, to good. Kim. Wow, wow, wow. And that was yeah. a revelation, yeah. quite honestly. Yeah. That was major, yeah. major. Yeah. That was earth shattering, That's you know, good. because. Um, and a lot of us are like this, where we'll be last on the totem pole. Yeah. And no disrespect to our, our amazing men, uh, but as women, a lot of times we are last on the totem pole. And, and fellas, I know you feel this way too, where you are last on the totem pole, and like Chris Rock said, all you want is your big piece of chicken. <laughs> <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> and the kids know when we get that chicken meal at, at Publix, they know that's daddy's, that's a big oh, piece wow. of chicken. <laughs> but um, you feel like you give so much. You feel like you're sacrificing so much and you work so hard and just physically you get drained because you are doing you, then you have the kids, yes. and then you have your work, and some of you got two and three jobs, yes. and then you are, are working at the church, and sure. you know, all sorts of things. Some of you may be caregivers for your parents, or yes. you know, all sorts of things, and you just feel like, ah, where am I? Yes. You know, and... <laughs> There are times when, when you know, you look at the people that are on the totem pole and they might complain about the pecking order. Yep. And I used to say, be glad you were on the totem pole. I ain't even made it on the totem pole just yet. <laughs> um, wow. But it was saying yes to Kim. Yes, yes. It was, it was realizing that that level of sacrifice was not feeding yeah. me. And, and again, another revelation for me was if I'm not fed even a little bit, yeah. yep. I got nothing to, to, to give. Right, absolutely. Absolutely. I saw, I want to say it was um, on Reverend Brown's Instagram, and he said, um, I, I don't know that I'm quoting him, he may have you know, posted it from someplace else, but essentially, um, if, if, if you can't pour it from the empty cup. Right. Right. I'm paraphrasing. Yep. That's is, true. You know, if you have, if you don't have anything in you, then sure. you can't put sure. it out. Sure. And and that was that yes. was that was really me. Yeah. Um, and that's I can't even say in the last ten years, in the last two and a half years. Wow. Wow. That's when that happened for me. Wow. That's fantastic. And and it is it's desperately important. Maybe just maybe you know it made me think about um, how mothers are so self-sacrificing. They, they neglect themselves, they abuse themselves, they just, they run on fumes mm -hmm. because children show you no mercy. <laughs> I mean, they, yes. their needs are their needs. They don't care how tired you are. They don't care whether you feel like doing it. And they, they end up putting their spouse before them. They end up putting their children before them. And in, in the earlier years, and perhaps that's a, there's a time for that, but maybe what the scripture that came to my mind is that the last shall be first. That's right. That's right. And then the first shall be, mm -hmm. shall be last. That, that he brings over time an inversion of how we have lived our lives. Sure. And, you know, because your kids will not be dependent like that forever. They better not be. <laughs> 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 that ain't how we roll. <laughs> Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. Uh, if you guys have questions, you can get in line now. I'm going to ask another uh, question here. Um, tell us the favorite place that you've traveled in the world. Uh, it, my, it doesn't have to be in the world. It could be here in the United States. It could sure, be in the Caribbean, sure. wherever. One of, my, one of my favorite places, and if you follow me on, on social media, you, then you saw uh, the trip because we did like a travel diary, uh, was to St. Lucia. Uh, and I, I just love, there are a few places where I feel like I am feeling the breath of God. Oh, yeah, wow. 
where I am seeing the face of the Lord. Mm, And that's one of those places that just does it for me, you know, uh, time and time again. Uh, it's the people, it's, yeah, it's yeah. visually, you know. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's definitely uh, one of my favorite places. And I was there uh, last fall. Uh, wow. Some of our friends there were so great. And again, Tandria, the woman out there with the locks, she set up for them to do a um, pre-release book party. Oh, wow. And so uh, we, we kind of uh, launched the, the, the book out there and wow. it, was, it was really great. So that's that's one of my favorite places. Um, here, um, I'm, I'm a water baby. Okay, yeah, I'm yeah. a true yep. water baby. So any place that's by the lakes yes. or the river and, you know, places like that, that's just always going to just, yes. that's going to do it, you know, because I, I feel, again, that that cleansing, you yes. know, that, that comes from being in and around water. Wow. One thing before we do the rest of the questions, something that I forgot to mention when we were talking about parenting. We're my moms with daughters. Wow. Now, this is an interesting thing that got put on me a little while ago because I'm not a mom of a, of a, of a daughter. But this observation was dropped in my spirit so clearly. Mothering a daughter is not a competition. It's an opportunity. Oh, wow. That's so good. That's so good. Wow. Don't compete with her. Love mm. her. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Teach her. Mm. Endure her, so mm. to speak. Yeah, yeah. It's not a competition. Mm. And just because it's her turn now, boo boo, doesn't mean it won't be your turn again. Or maybe it's your turn now, but just in a different way. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know why yeah. that had been on my heart. And I don't know if maybe because as a mom of sons, I'm looking at, well, who y'all sending my way? Don't send me crazy <laughs> girls because you done competed with them and now they're all screwy and wacky. I want them girls. What? You better get them girls right <laughs> before you start sending them off to somebody. <laughs> wow. But, but that has really really been on me bishop in such a very strong way and because uh, i had i have a mom yes who is like i mentioned only 18 years older than me and in the same profession wow and i never once felt competition yeah I never once felt that I was a burden or yeah. an anchor to her soul sure. in a negative way that yeah, she yeah. couldn't. I yeah. didn't feel like a wing clipper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. She still soared. Wow. And I still soared. Yeah. And, and I never felt a negativity yeah. at all. Yeah. So I hope that that is a blessing. That's going to bless me if your daughters run up on my kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I really think that that's a God word. I have never seen, I've I've heard from so many young girls that their mom is jealous of them. I'm like, how do you, how are you jealous of your own daughter? This is a different dispensation, a different generation. So, but but I've heard it. And I've, the the strained mother-daughter relationships that I've heard that they, they can't get along with their mom. You really don't realize how, how common that is. I do believe that that was, God inspired that in you. For you to say that to some individuals here, some people that are watching and folks that will watch this over time, that's a word from God. Wow, I like that. Wow. Well, we'll go right here. Hi, Kim. Hi. My question is, you have spent most of your career in the spotlight. You've spent most of your career in the spotlight. And so have you ever had a moment during this, during your career, this roller coaster that it can be sometimes that you wanted to take a detour or reposition yourself to go another round? And if you did, what brought you back to the center to what you were passionate about or love? No. Okay. (laughs) And I know that that sounds absolutely crazy. Uh, but there has n- there's there's never been a time in my life or my career where I felt like I don't want to do this anymore. Um, I've never been so overwhelmed. I've never been so disappointed and hurt and, and crushed. Um, 
If anything, that's fuel. But I do know you're that a different that, breed, girl. You're different. <laughs> <laughs> but, wow. but but that's how I, you know, have to process it. Um, there were there were too many before me professionally that I was able to see what happens if you don't really have a clear understanding that this is a business and what that really means. And from the standpoint of, if I wasn't working as an actor, I didn't want to be a has-been at 18. And I wasn't about to become a tragedy or a statistic because I felt like I owed my village way more than that. And I knew that early on. And I know that the fire is still in my belly to do what I do. And there are so many different ways and lanes to do what I want to do just in my industry. Um, but I, I really do love my industry and all the ways it's grown and, and transformed and impacted. Uh, it's, it's, it's tremendous. It's, it's fantastic. Um, and, and, I still, and I still have that. I remember a pastor, Pastor Marlon in L.A., we were uh, living in L.A. very briefly, and we were going to a wonderful church uh, that Pastor Marlon Sanders and his, his beautiful wife, Tamara, pastor. And uh, he said how he used to be a drummer, and he really wanted, this was before, you know, he'd started a church and everything, but he really wanted to be a professional drummer and go out on tour and, you know, that sort of thing. And he said, God, if that's not for me, take it, take it out of me, take that desire out and replace it with what I'm supposed to desire. And he says, sure enough, one day he got a call that he could go out on tour and he said, no, it's not there anymore. And that's when he realized that it just, you know, he still enjoyed it, but it wasn't that, I don't have that, you know. Mom and I were just talking about this in a different way, you know, in terms of just what she wants to do, what that fire in her belly is versus, no, nah, nah, not really feeling that right now. Um, but there's never been anything that's made me say, forget it, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a go be a teacher, or I'm going to go and, you know, have a car wash business. I mean, just, just anything other than, than that, you know, because I, I, I think I get it, the industry, so I understand that success is cyclical. I understand what to do when I'm going through because I'm not working and, and those things. And not that it's perfect. It's just I still have such a desire. I mean, there's still so many characters I haven't played. People are like, you know, oh, you've been doing this for 40 years. Yeah, but one show was nine years. One show was five years. I'm grateful for that. But that's like half the career right there playing two people. <laughs> so amen for that. But there's still so many you know, characters that I want to play, and there's still so much in me creatively. When I did Dancing with the Stars, I said to my partner, Sasha, I hope you like archaeology, because you got a lot of digging to do to pull out all the wonderful stuff I know is in me. And sure enough, he dug his heels in and, you know, pulled all that creativity out. But that's, that's really, I still, I still get excited about this thing 40 years later. I love it, I love it. Wow. August is marriage month at Word of Faith. And I noticed you're wearing a ring and you've mentioned your husband a couple of times during the talk. Uh, I would like for you to share, if you would, how you met your husband, how long you've been married, and some uh, things you've learned to keep your marriage strong. Well, thank you, Mother, for asking me. <laughs> thank you so much, beautiful. Um, again, if you follow me on social media, you know that uh, we just celebrated uh, our uh, wedding anniversary on the 23rd of, of July. And uh, it's our 11th wedding anniversary. We've been together for, amen, we've been together for almost 14 years. And... Um, I'm wearing um, this stainless steel jewelry uh, by a wonderful designer who I <laughs> met, uh, who introduced herself uh, to me on Instagram because uh, steel 
is the symbol for 11 years. And so I had done a whole kind of campaign, if you will, about steel in love and steel together. And I had looked at, this is a sermon, I'm going to preach it over here one day. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I had looked up this YouTube whole tutorial from the U.S. steel industry about how steel is made. And like most, you know, metals, there's, you know, this tremendous process. And there is uh, blasting to get to the iron. And I realized, oh, so they start with something good before they even get to the steel. And so they blast and blast all these rocks and get to the iron. Then they go through all this different process and, and, and hot, hot, mega hot heating systems and all sorts of things to get to another process. And then from there, there's a... a pressurized washing. And I was like, oh, this is marriage right here. <laughs> this right here, this thing, they talking about making steel. That's how you make a marriage. And that's a lot. This girl of is preaching without a license. <laughs> My goodness, you go girl. I like that. <laughs> and, I, and I realized that that was really relevant, you know, to, to marriage and certainly my marriage, um, because, uh, there's so many highs and lows, as you know, in the ebb and flow of just coexisting, let alone cohabitating. Uh, uh, uh and just when you think, oh, I really know this person. Oh Lord, no, I don't know nothing. You know, and because then you think, well, I know myself, but you're growing and changing and evolving and, and, and all of those things. And, Chris and I don't have it figured out. Um, we, have, uh, we, we do have a lot of wisdom. I will definitely say we have a lot of wisdom. And I was like, oh, I'm going to write a book called Steel Workers. And it's a marriage book on, 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 on the whole process and that analogy. Because you have to have a lot of patience. Ooh, if you ain't got your listening ears on. <laughs> You have to have, as I tell the kids, do you have your listening ears on? Um, because you have to hear one another, active listening. It took me forever to realize I was, I was hearing him, but I was hearing him to see when was the pause so that I could talk. <laughs> that ain't listening, you know. Um, and there's so many other, you know, things that, that go with it, that whole, the language thing and, and, and all that, and you just... You know, and then you have to keep it the forefront. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Why is it worth it? Because it is. I mean, just, you, you, <laughs> you know, and realizing that there's partnership happening. You're building something. You're building your life together. You're building, if you have business like we do, business together. We have children. We're building human beings together. You know, and so those are the things when you keep that at, at the forefront. We laugh a lot. We laugh a lot. Um, and sometimes that's by design so that we don't just sort of y'all ain't reading about us. <laughs> oh, they don't they don't nut it up. There they go, they ain't gonna make it. Um, because you 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 have to you have to, again, disengage when you don't get overwhelmed. But let me tell you something. You can get overwhelmed in marriage. And you can get overwhelmed just in, in, in trying to communicate. Never mind just all of marriage. Just communicating. And you, and you have to find the ways, and it's a process. I was telling uh, Kim Coles and I were, were together the other day, and she played Sinclair on Living Single, and she's uh, been married recently, and uh, we were talking, and I said, Kim, with marriage, it's the difference between going to a job that you hate or a career that you love. There's, there's, there's work regardless, and it's hard work, and it's a lot of work. But you know the difference. Sometimes your career right now might just be your side gig. And your job is the, what you're going to every day to get your check, but your career is over here. And that's the thing you love. That's the thing that you'll stay up late and make all the sacrifices for. Not the job. The job you do just enough to get your check. Y'all know the truth? 
But it's still work, isn't it? It's still work, isn't it, family? And so you have to look at it and look at that person. Are you the job that I can't stand? Or are you the career that I love? Because it sets a tone with how you deal with one another. I hope that answered some of your questions. That was really good. Wow, I love it. Right here. Hello, Ms. Fields. Um, my question is, uh, I don't see you as um, around in the, uh, in the empowerment and the role model uh, areas of, of black women or black families as much as I think you would benefit from and we would benefit from having you there. Uh, so my question is, why, why not? Because I'm my question little, is, where are you looking? I'm a, I'm a little bit older than you. But where so, are you looking? But the Essence Fest. I think you are a great I was, I role was at model. Essence. I was at Essence. Where are you at? So Essence. where are you looking, my friend? I, I think you're a great role model for, you know, I'm a little bit older than you. But, you know, we grew up working hard, but doing the right thing. I think... And I've, I've only seen you here, and I've, I've really, really benefited from it. Mm. Uh, so will I be seeing you more? Because you are, you are one of our, our most uh, powerful women. And I think, you know, our culture and our women and men and families will benefit from seeing you more, speak, hearing you speak more. Because I think you are, you know, you're one of our legends. Well, thank you very much. But again, I throw it right back yeah. to you, baby, on where are you looking? Because <laughs> I'm, I'm everywhere. Yeah, wow. You just have to maybe broaden where you're looking or look in different places. And just because you don't see someone mm. doesn't mean they're not there. Wow, right? oh, wow. I promise you. Wow. I serve. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I do the thing. Wow. 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 Thank you very much. Wow. You. you know what? Our, our time is gone. I'm, I'm going to ask you to meet her out at the table and ask her your question out there because all of our time is gone. Our time is up. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, time flies when you're having fun, does it? it does. I tell it you. Really does. Wow. Will you give Kim Fields a wonderful hat? Oh. Such a quality guest with so much ministry in you, girl. Thank you, Pat. This year. Thank it, you. Just, your, your relationship with God really shows. I mean, how you have matured in grace over the years and what you've endured and, and how you've grown through it and, and you know, just God's, God's wisdom oh. in your life. That's, that's a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Thank you. Wow. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, oh, wow. for having me. And oh, I can't wait good. to see you all out of yes. the back. We'll chat some oh, more. Yeah. Get your book personalized, yeah. not just autographed, but personalized. Yes. We do have books uh, out there. And, and Jim, I mean, tells the whole story. It's called uh, Blessed Life, My Surprising Journey of Joy and Tears from Harlem to Hollywood. Oh, I love so it. So it, it, it covers everything. I love it. I love it.